In this video, I'm going to put this door in that opening. And we're going to do it right now. This is my bulkhead entrance. I recently just fixed some sill damage that was up here. And then I fixed the stairs because those were rotted away. I framed in this opening so that this door is going to fit. And now I'm going to take this metal door. It's a perfect door. And now I'm going to destroy it. Not really destroy it, but I am going to cut it. And it's not something that you typically do. So I wanted to make this video because I haven't actually done it in like 10 years, but <laughs> I'm going to show you that it is possible. Another option that I could have went with was I could special order a door for this opening. And the reason that I have to cut this door down is because as you can see, this head height is not your typical head height. It's much shorter and uh, I don't want to wait a couple weeks for a door and I don't want to pay probably double the price. Of course, another option is I could put the old plywood doors back on here, or I could make new ones, but I want a steel door for security reasons, and I think it's gonna look better. First thing I wanna do is get my rough opening where it needs to be. This is a 36 inch by 80 inch door. Whenever I am installing a pre-hung door like this, I like to make the rough opening frame to frame and frame to floor two and a half inches bigger than the actual size of the door. So a 36 inch by 80 inch door, I would make the rough opening 38 and a half by 82 and a half. Some people go two inches, but especially with me in an old house, things don't seem to be level and plumb. So I like to have a little extra and I can fill in the sides or the top if I have to, especially with something like this. This is not like a finished doorway or anything like that. This is a basement bulkhead, not a big deal. So I added framing here to make this 38 and a half. So I know that my width is good. And as you know, my height, I can't do anything about it. So it is where it is. And I'm gonna cut the door to that. So I have my door laid down on my saw horses here. There's a couple different ways that I could cut this down. One way would be down here. I could take this threshold off. There's a couple screws going in this way. I could take those screws out, take this threshold out, and then cut my door up here, and then take this piece off and reattach that. But that is what I want to kind of avoid. The other thing about taking material off of the bottom of the door so that it drops down, you know what else is going to drop down is the doorknob. And since the hole is already here, I want to avoid that. So what I'm going to choose to do is actually take everything off of the top. That is including the frame of the door or the jam. So I'm going to cut this piece and then I'm going to reattach this piece here. I am going to end up being into these hinges because I think I have to take off about 10 inches or so, something like this. And then I will re I'll move this hinge down further reattach it. I'll show you how to do that. And when I cut this door, usually these are filled with foam except for all the edges. So there's probably a piece of wood right here that I'm going to lose and I want to reinstall it here. When we get to that point, I'll show you what to do. But the first thing I'm going to do is take the door off of the hinges and remove the door so we don't even have to worry about it right now. this off. Sometimes you need to hold the plastic piece on the inside from turning. You just twist it, pop it off like that. Now to make this easier, hopefully, I'm going to tip this up like this, drop it like this so that I can get that door out. There you go. Now I can put the door aside. For now, I'm going to put this back up here. I'm going to take out any screws that are in the, the frame like this. Put 
There's the two screws you would take out if you were removing the threshold. This is kind of a poorly made door. Look at that. That's supposed to be flush with this. <sighs> Maybe I should try and fix that. This side's good. That's how it's supposed to be. I'm going to take this screw out. And I'm going to hold this flush where it needs to be. Then I can reinstall that screw. And then I'm going to sink this one in more. There you go. Let me get a screw right here. This is the... Whoa! Yeah, that's kind of weird. I should have stapled that. Anyways, these are the longer screws that go into the hinges to go into the frame. I'm going to put longer ones than that. These look like two, two inches, maybe? Two and a half. And then these are for wet, the weather stripping. I'll show you how to do those as well. And some paperwork, if you want it. Now we can measure for the door. This header, I know, is not level. It's just how it worked out with the framing. I just wanted to keep it where it was. So this side is lower. And I want to take the smallest measurement, and then I'm going to subtract a half inch so I know that I can move this door around with no issues. And I don't mind having that gap there. If I measure each side, I can see that this is 72 and a half. And then this side is 72. So I'm going to make my height on this door 71 and a half inches. That'll give me plenty of room to maneuver around. Because this door has a threshold and I'm not cutting the bottom of the door, I'm basically going to make it a rectangle. The bottom is locked, the top is locked, and I don't want to cut one side more than the other. I just want to keep that rectangle and then move that around however I have to in the opening. If you have a split jam door that doesn't have a threshold, you can play, especially with a wooden door, you can play with these heights making, let's say, this side a little longer, and then you can cut the door on the bottom at an angle if you wanted to, if the bottom is at a level. But in this case, like I said, we're gonna keep that rectangle, put it in place, and adjust it accordingly. Change of plans. I'm gonna get this as tight as I can. I know that with a quarter inch, I'll still be able to move it around. So I'm gonna make this 71 and three quarters just because I want as much height as I can possibly get. Just a little adjustment. I'm going to hook on the bottom up here, 71 and three quarters, right in the middle of that hinge, which is totally fine. I'll just take that hinge off and then I'll mark 71 and three quarters on the other side. So this is the top of my door frame or jam, whatever you want to call it. And things to keep in mind while you're doing this, you go up here and you see how this is built and you want to recreate this exactly. So when I cut that line, what I'm cutting is right here. If it was a case where this was on the top, you would have to account for that. But this is the way this is built. You just want to investigate all that kind of stuff before you go cutting. I'm just gonna take this piece of weather stripping right out on both sides. It's easy enough to remove and put back in. Actually, I'll just let it hang right there. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay, as long as it's out of the way. Cool. Now I'm gonna take my square and hold it to that line and then mark this. I'm gonna make one cut nice and straight this way, but I will have to cut this back a little bit in order to accommodate for the top piece here. You can see the way this is built right here. So I'll have to mimic this down here afterwards. I'm gonna take a piece of plywood, scrap piece, put it under here, out of the way of where I'm gonna cut. 
but I just want to make sure that when I cut this, these pieces just don't go falling on the floor. And this is supported as well. Make sure everything's out of the way for me to cut, kind of like that. But first, double check your measurements. Measure twice, cut once. Think to yourself over and over again, am I doing the right thing? Should I just special order a door? Second guess every single thing you're doing and then say, screw it and cut it. I'm gonna use my circular saw. It's got a fine finish blade on it and I'm just gonna carefully cut this. No going back now. Now with this piece, I need to take these off. They are stapled and potentially glued. So I just gotta be careful, take each of these off and take this piece off. I don't know why that's there, but take that off too. So we just have this piece left over. I don't know if this is glued. Like I said, I just want to be careful because I would like to have a nice flat surface that isn't destroyed right here. But I don't need these side pieces, so I don't care what happens with those. not glued. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay. So this piece is basically gonna go like this. Remember, this is the top, so it's gonna be even with this right here. But as you can see, we have to notch this out and take it back to here. I'm gonna hold it even like this at the top. Then once that's even, I can mark this right here. I don't wanna get rid of that. Same thing on both sides. Hold this side even, mark it right here. This side's gonna be a little trickier with this, but that's okay. If I really wanted to, I could fill this in and then attach it, but should be totally fine. So I'm gonna use my favorite tool in the world, my oscillating tool to cut this. And I'm just gonna hold it to where the depth needs to be, right there. That's how much I wanna take off. So I'm gonna use this tape as a depth gauge so I don't go too, too far. I already messed up. I shouldn't have gone up like that. <sighs> I gotta take these things slow, guys. Silly me. I'm gonna measure this. That is three quarters of an inch. Down here. Do three quarters. Mark it with my square. Now I changed my blade. I'll just follow this line. with that piece. That's pretty good. Awesome. I'll put this glue wherever it's gonna be touching. Pop it in place. 
I'm gonna shoot a couple nails in here. Okay, really what's important is to get this perfect right here where these two meet because that's where the door is going to close. And ideally, if the door was made uh, in, you know, a way that is satisfactory, this bottom will line up and this will too, but that is not the case with this door, unfortunately. So I'm going by that right there. I'm gonna put this weather stripping back in place. Now's a good time to make sure it's good at the bottom. So I'm gonna cut it right here. Maybe a little more. Okay, there we go. When the door closes, nice and airtight. Do the same thing on the other side. So for instance, on this side, I think that can look a little bit better. So I'm gonna take the weather stripping out completely. And that's a little messed up, so I'm gonna just cut this straight. Like that. And put it in here a little nicer. Ah, there we go. That looks better. And then here, cut it like this. Something like that. Sweet. I am at a point where I can check to see if this is gonna be good, but I wanted to really quick talk about door swing. This is a right hand swing door, a right hand in swing, which means if I have my back to the hinges, my arm is right here closest to the door, that's gonna swing in this way. That's gonna determine it being a right hand in swing door because I open it, swings in using my right hand. And the reason I did that was because this wall here, I wouldn't want to have it swing in this way and then have to go around here. That's personal preference. You can do whatever you want to do. But so if you go to the store and it says LH, you know, 36, 80, LH or RH, that's left hand or right hand in swing door. So looking at this, you can tell the door goes right here. The hinges are here. So it swings in this way. In this case, I want to hold this even with the framing that's there. So I've cut four of these blocks. This is going to be temporary to help me get it even with that framing. I'm just going to hold them like this away from the hinges and the bottom. Put a couple nails in here. I'm not worried about the holes that are being made here. No big deal. I'm going to install four of these. door or the frame of the door somewhat center I'm gonna check the bottom for level Wow it's actually level that should make this level it's perfect so the door frame actually looks really great when I just put it in place and get it all plumb so I really don't need all of this room on either side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of three quarter, another piece in here, so that I'll have a smaller gap to insulate when I'm done on either side. So now I can take this out and add that three quarter. All right, I'm gonna put this back in place. We're gonna check it again one more time before we say that we're good. Plum. Level. Now, I'm gonna take a pencil, mark down here. And guess what? We're gonna take this out again. Now I'm going to use some construction adhesive on the bottom. I'm not going to go crazy. If this was an exterior door where I would be concerned possibly about rain or something like that, I would be using silicone. The reason I'm using this is because, I mean, it's, it's not a bad idea, first of all, but 
Also, this is going to help the threshold to stay in place. So if there are imperfections in the concrete, which I'm sure there is, at least the construction adhesive will kind of fill in those voids in the threshold and make it so if you step on it, it doesn't go up and down because that drives me nuts. So throw this in place right on top of that construction adhesive. Get it even on each side, something like that. And then I'm going to actually step on this threshold to get that threshold to kind of sit in that construction adhesive. That should be good. So I'm going to start at the bottom hinge side and I'm going to use some screws just to get this temporarily in place. We're going to actually attach it when we put the door in here, but I want to get it close. Get one screw in this frame. Get this plum. Make sure it's level. Make sure this is level. Get some screws in these blocks. I want that framing even right here. All right, now I'll be able to adjust that once I put my door in, get it to where it needs to be, and I can shim it, screw it in place. But we got a couple things to do before then. Gotta get the door cut down. I already know that I'm gonna run into this hinge, so I'm gonna take that off. Now I have to get a measurement for the door, and you might naturally want to Put your tape down on the threshold here and then measure up to the top and use that measurement but if you take a look at the door right here you have this piece that goes to the threshold and it's going to be hard to just kind of decide where to put this but also these hinges are going to be in the same place so the door is going to match up at the bottom which is exactly what we want I'm actually going to measure from the hinges to the top and then on the door I can do the same thing. So let's go with this middle hinge right here and I am going to sit my tape like this and then measure up and I'm going to say that that is 26 and 3 16 but I want to take off a little bit because I want to have a gap here. I want to have a reveal. I want the door to be able to open and close with no issues. But let's measure that on here. So this is the top of the door. I sat my tape like this onto the hinge. So if I take my tape like this, I should be able to get the same measurement. 26 and 3 16 Remember, I'm going to take more than that off, but I just want to double check that measurement. So let's measure from the top of the bottom hinge. I'll sit it right on top of there and then measure 55 and 3 eighths, a little strong. So now if I hook on here, this line should be at 55 and 3 eighths, just a little strong. And that's exactly where it is. Before I cut this, I just want to take a look at how this is built. And you can see this piece of wood right here is 45. And then this metal kind of bends over this little detail right here. I could try and recreate all this. I don't think I'll get a good bend right here. I don't think it's worth it for me to spend all that time trying to recreate this exactly. It's not something that you're going to really ever see or care about. So what I'm going to do is make this line and I'm just going to cut this straight and work with it that way. But before I do that, I'm going to put some painter's tape on here so I don't scuff up the door at all with the saw when I cut it. I'm not worried about scuffing this up. Just the part of the door that is staying. I can still see my pencil mark right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract an eighth of an inch. 
uh, because I want to have that reveal at the top right here. And I can measure from the top right here, nine and 15 sixteenths. And make that same mark over here. Nine and 15 sixteenths. Now I have to decide what I'm gonna cut that with. And I have an idea. You could use a circular saw to cut this as long as it has a bunch of teeth like this, a fine finished blade, or if you use a metal blade, there's probably foam in between these two very thin sheets of metal. I'm gonna use this handy little cutoff wheel uh, and I have my straight edge set up here so that this guard will just ride along here and hopefully we'll make a nice straight cut all the way down. And I have this set right here, the depth just past just the metal. So I'm gonna cut this side and then I'll flip the door and I'll cut the other side. But first, safety glasses. That looked pretty good. I'm just gonna take this stuff off and flip everything. There shouldn't be as many sparks with a circular saw blade, so if you're concerned with that at all, either cut outside or you can try using a different blade. But this is working pretty good. Might be melting some of the foam in there though. I'm just gonna connect these lines, straight cut. Hey, oh yeah, it's melting a little bit. So now right here, I wanna try and get this styrofoam out of here. Uh, this is really sharp, so I'm just gonna be careful for now, but I want to run this saw against here and here so that I can clear all this out of here because I am gonna put a piece of wood in here. with an old chisel and make a mess. Function five eighths. Pretty good. Make my mark here. A little stronger than that. Make sure it's gonna fit. Looking good. Just gonna put some construction adhesive in here. Oh, uh, like this. Go to the bottom first. against that styrofoam and glue. I'm gonna get a nail in this way. And then on this side. So I put that filler piece in here. I clamped it, let it dry overnight. And then I sanded it and primed it with two coats of primer. It's not perfect, but you're never gonna see that. And that primer also helped along with the sanding to make sure that this wasn't sharp in case somebody just so happens to put their hand on the top of the door. So that is all set. We can put the door back on the hinges.
I like to have my foot under here so I can adjust the door so the hinge goes in easy. Let's check it out, see how we did. All right, that's pretty good. So what you want to look for is the reveal around the door. So the reveal is this gap here. You can see that it's not even, but we are going to adjust with shims and screws when we actually attach this door. I'm happy with that gap up there. It's okay that it's smaller here. I'll take care of that. Looking good. All right. I'll open this up and I'm going to put that third hinge back in the top. So I'm going to put this hinge about here ish. I just want to make sure that when I put this here, I don't want this uh, hinge so close to this that if somebody ends up bumping this out with some trim, which they might do in the future, I might do it in the future, I don't know, but it'd come straight out like this. So I want to make sure that I'm able to pop that hinge up without having an issue with that trim. So as you can see, this board is going to be in my way. I didn't think about that, but that's okay. Easy fix. I'll just take this screw out and move it down a little bit. It should be fine. So to make this easy, I'm going to pull this weather stripping out so you can see what's going on. Now, in order to figure out where this hinge is going, I'm just going to measure off of the existing ones so I know how far to hold it away from here. This looks like a little shy of five eighths. A little shy of five eighths. Now I can hold my hinge to these marks and I just want to leave that pin far enough away from the top. That should be good. I want to carefully make a mark around this hinge like that. And then the one against the door is easy because it's just a straight line like this. Of course, there's a sticker here. Let's take that off. And you mark the top one. Now to get these hinges to sit in the jam and in the door, it's called mortising. And you can use a router like this. Basically, I have this shim just to show you. Same thickness as the hinge. You just put that there and adjust this like that. And this will sit on the edge of the door. You'll have to take the door off in order to use this. You lock this in and you can cut it out. This is the cutoff that I have from the door. And as you can see, the jam side is going to be harder to do because you can't really get in there with this piece. So what you have to do is set it so that it sits on here. something like this, and then you ride the router along right here, like that. So you can do it that way for sure, if you have a router and if you want to do it that way. But I'm going to do it the old school way. I'm going to start with just a razor knife and kind of dig in here. I'm going to use this around these edges, and I can also Use a hammer to make it easier. And then once you get to flat spots, you can use a chisel. You just want to try and go about the depth of that hinge. Even Steven. Okay, now we can do the door side. Hopefully this side will be a little easier because it's just straight and all of this is coming out. Check it. 
even Steven. I'm going to take my hinge that goes here and go to the center of these holes. They also have a punch that's specifically made for hinges, but I don't have one. That one's pretty cool though. And just mark the center of each of these holes. Okay. Now I'm going to pre-drill where those were punched. And I can put the hinge together. And I'm going to hold it like this. Make sure I put the hinge pin in correctly. Just like that. And I can install the hinge. So you can see that these hinges are pretty much even with right here. So that is just about where I want to put this one. I'm going to hold it there in the center. Okay, and that's just to tell me where I need the pre-drill. Hold the door over. Install the screws. Put my weather stripping back in. All right, let's see how we did. Awesome. Let's secure it. In order to secure this, I'm gonna use some long screws and I'm gonna shim everything first and then I'm gonna open the door up and put the screws in. I put one screw in each hinge that goes into the framing and then everywhere else where there's not a hinge, I go through the jam into the framing. As you saw when I installed this frame with these pieces, I put everything square, made sure it was gonna work so I shouldn't have to maneuver it that way. The only thing that I did do is down at the bottom, I knew that this had a little tiny bit of a hump. Uh, so before that glue set, what I did was I shifted this up. So I pried it just a little bit and put a screw in here I'm gonna have to put some shims under here just so it stays there. Same thing on this side. So that way I don't have a hump right here that might make the door a little off and trickier to close. For the most part, you want to just pay attention to the reveals, this gap between the door and the jam, and try and get it as even as you can all the way. So if there's a gap right here that is too small, what you want to do is take a screw and pull that hinge in this way a little bit to make this gap bigger. If it's the opposite, where this gap is bigger, you want to do the opposite and put shims in the hinge side until that gap gets to where you want it to be. Another thing that I like to pay attention to is over here above this hinge, you can see below the hinge there's a gap right here and up here it's pretty much tight with the door. I don't like how that is so over here what I'll do is I'll put some shims in so that it brings this gap closer. I know that this gap has to get smaller so I'll pull it this way and if you look over here what happens when I do that is that gap opens up a little bit but this whole hinge and everything is moving too. So first, I'll put some shims right here to stop that hinge from moving. And then you can watch that gap as I push that over. The hinge will stay where it is. And then above it, we'll move to where I want it to be. So that's what I'm gonna do now. But first, I need some shims. I'm gonna make my own out of pressure treated. just to hold the shim in. I'm 
going to put these right where I know the screw is going to go. I put a shim in with the big end like this first and then the smaller end like this so it ends up being flat on the inside there against the framing. Now I'll pry that over, put shims on the other side to open up that gap. We got shims in the top and bottom. That gap looks good there. It's about the same as that. And then in the middle, it gets a little tighter. I'm not gonna worry about shims right now. I'm gonna do the hinge side first. And you can see this gap is just about the same as the one on the top. So we're gonna put the hinge screws in. These are what comes with the door. I think they only gave me two. Um, but you can buy longer ones like this. They're the same thing, same finish and everything, same strength. So I have some longer ones. I'll use these. And then I can put one of these shorter ones in the middle. That's fine, unless I can find another one of these. But these are for the hinges. And then everywhere else, I'll use these exterior screws, which are three inch, just like these. So now I'm gonna take out the screw where I put the shims, and I do the screw that's closer this way so it'll bite more of the framing. You can see these ones are further that way. Take out this screw and the only other thing you want to do is make sure that the face of this is exactly where you want it. I want it even with the framing. You might want it even with some drywall, whatever you might have, and then you can put your screws in. Just like that, right here. bottom. Now with the hinge screws in, I check my reveal, make sure I didn't suck it in too tight. Still looks awesome. If I have to adjust, I can pull that in a little bit. Now we can put the screws on this side. So this one, I can move it a little bit. Make sure it's even here. Uh, and I put these shims in here because I want to pry against this to move that whole thing. Because if you go right here, you could bow this instead of pushing this whole thing over. So I'm going to try and pull this down and I'm going to pre-drill in through here. Might have to go at a slight angle to be able to get into these shims. My three inch screws in. Same thing on the bottom. So now I'm just going to check the door at the top and the bottom, and it looks good. Since I'm here, might as well install these pieces, which go just like this as an extra little bump out for this weather stripping. Pull this out a little bit. Same thing at the top. Now those screws are completely hidden. Now this one, I want this gap to be just about there. I'm just gonna leave them loose and then I'm gonna let the screw suck the jam in a little bit. See if that put it where I wanted it. Shut the door. Look at that reveal. Perfect. It's just one spot that I want to fix. And that is this one 
right here. I want that to be a little bigger of a gap. If you look on the other side, I want it to somewhat match that. Nice. Put some shims right here, do another one. I like that. That door's in. I don't need these boards anymore, so I can take those off and then I'll go around and cut all these shims even with this framing. I just thought of something. I'm gonna be putting a deadbolt in here. And for this doorknob, uh, I put the shims right here uh, and I don't like the gap right here. So I'm gonna put a whole piece of plywood in here for this to be able to be sucked in tight. And I'll put one screw here, one screw up here, just so I have something solid for when I put my screws in for the doorknob and for the deadbolt, wherever that may be. There we go. That's gonna be better. Nice. I'm also gonna add a deadbolt here. That is for another video. And as far as this gap goes, if you watch my channel, you are gonna be surprised because I am probably gonna use spray foam. This is one spot that I think spray foam will actually work perfectly, even though I tell you all the time that I'm not a big fan. I think this came out great. I might even paint it. I could fill in where this hinge was and touch up any of the little stuff like that. But now I have a door a much better door than I had before, even though the old one was kind of vintage and kind of cool, um, but it's a lot more secure. So I'm happy with it. So if you needed to cut a metal door down, I hope this video helps you out. If you wanna help support my channel, the best possible thing you could do is click on another one of my videos. They should be popping up somewhere around here and go watch that. I hope you enjoy them. If you wanna support me even further, you can subscribe to my Patreon or join my YouTube memberships with the button below. And I have a ton of behind the scenes videos that I upload there all the time. But no pressure, totally up to you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna put this door in this opening. <laughs> one more. That's how it's actually done, guys. Making these doors. You bleed just to the... No? Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. It's a straight line, I promise. Whoa. Don't do that. Hammer! This is not. Ow! Put one screw in here. I just can't do it with my left hand. Oh my God. <laughs> just get one screw in here. This bit kind of sucks too. I will blame the bit. This bit sucks. It's the bit, it's the bit's fault. Doesn't it take like 
600 years for styrofoam to decompose or like it never decomposes. Look that up. Get back to me. I don't like that. I, I can hear it. Yeah. Can you hear it? Yeah. Should we be taking this outside? Mm. Ah! Who put this dirt here? Man, I would have shoveled all that out if I did this. One staple staple. Two staple staple. Three staple staple. Ha ha ha. Four staple staple. Ha ha. All right, I'm having too much fun. We gotta get this done. <laughs> They used to call me DJ Cat. Actually, it was DJ Claw and Thorn. DJ Matt the Cat. Just a number of different things. I gotta cut so much out of this. Anybody have fingernails in the house? Yeah, this cut's uneven. Shut up, guys. I'm doing the best I can. Oh. I'm not strong enough. Ow! Looks dope, huh, Lauren? Looks like crap. F you. Uh, maybe it's just me. I can't control it. I can't control the foam. I did break it, too. Ah. So ashamed of myself. <laughs>